Hello and welcome. I'm Lindsay Vastola. I am here to introduce and welcome you to one that I am always excited to listen to is J.R. Burgess. I'm going to give a quick intro in a moment that definitely won't do him justice, but a couple quick things to help you make the most out of this session. Um, number one, if you are attending live, you are welcome to put your video on. Uh, J.R. likes the interaction that way, so you're welcome to put your video on. Um, please use the chat. There will be a Q&A, a live Q&A at the end, again, if you're attending live, uh, but JR definitely wants to get a chance to answer any of your questions. And, um, and if not, he's also offered to answer them by email. So um, the other piece of homework is just make sure that you have something to take notes because this man is full of tangible takeaways, things that, you, that will inspire you to take action. I had the absolute pleasure and honor to meet JR. I don't know, it's probably been a decade by now. <laughs> um, I remember that very first time we met after a conference and, um, and over the years, what's been so neat is really to see him go from trainer to the leader, the number one person who has opened up the most integrative medical fitness centers in the world. He's innovative, he's forward thinking, he really is ahead um, has been ahead of the curve and isn't just doing it, you know, for the sake of doing it. He has a real intention and purpose. You will feel that and see that and hear that today. I have no doubt. Um, and he wants to teach. He wants to be able to help others have an impact. And for those of you who are in, uh, you know, aligned and know the mission of Functional Aging Institute, uh, JR's message will absolutely align. And, uh, and I know you'll get a lot out of it. So you are in for a treat. JR, I will turn it over to you. And uh, everybody, I will keep everybody on mute. Uh, but again, the live session at the end Q&A, if we have some time, um, JR will absolutely open that up. So take it away, JR. Well, one of my most exciting moments of realization that not the whole world thought about medical fitness the way that I had happened at a conference about seven years ago. I was at the American Academy of Orthopedic Executives. This was, I had started as a personal trainer, became a, the clinic's practice administrator, and went to American Academy of Orthopedic Executives to really learn about orthopedics, pain management, how to really use some of the procedures that we're doing. But also along the journey, we started what we called a, a medical fitness program. And uh, an amazing keynote speaker from Athena Health was on the stage and he was presenting about innovations in healthcare. And they were talking about using electronic health records that integrated with all the various integrative health records. And they were talking about concierge medicine and telemedicine and all these little particulars about technology and systems to improve healthcare. And he's like, I know where there's a lot of smart people in the room here. Let's have some ideas of what could truly change healthcare. And I started getting excited because this guy is firing up the crowd and everything. And, and some people are throwing out some general ideas and he's like, that's good thinking. And I'm sitting there and I'm very shy and introverted still at this point in my life. And I'm like, I know I have the answer. I have the answer. So I blurt up and I go, me, 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 me. And this is a room of a, a thousand to 3,000 practice administrators, doctors. And I said, I have the answer, it's medical fitness. And it was like crickets. I thought I was showing something innovative and it was the most uncomfortable silence in the world. Not one applaud, I couldn't even see heads nodding, nothing. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I put myself out there. And I recognized at that moment a few different things that healthcare at this time was about volume, about profitability, about speed. Even though many of these professionals and doctors really want to make a difference, it's about how do I have a bottom line that supports our clinics and, and, and offices. That's what the, and I'm not saying good patient care wasn't their focus, that is what they are trying to, to think right now. Even when we look at managed healthcare in the future, they call them bundled payments and managed care. They're trying to find cost savings measures but it's all about how do we still have a certain bottom line? How do we make sure we're using cover procedures? So there's not a lot of thinking outside the box. And so I recognize it's about volume. I recognize that they had already tried medical fitness. You guys have all seen what they call hospital wellness centers. 
And I had numerous CFOs or CEOs talk to me later and says, yeah, we tried that. It lost a lot of money. Or we tried that and to get everybody on the page or to have champions. It just doesn't happen. So it's not that they don't get it or they haven't seen it. They didn't have a profitable model, which I hope to show you a little bit today about how to not be a hospital wellness center, how to not just be this gym, but how do we truly combine medicine in fitness to redefine healthcare. And through my 12 years of experience, I believe there is a formula that I'm gonna give you the overview today that I think is truly the key to redefining the way trainers, health coaches, medical leaders can look at profitability and outcomes in the same sentence when there's a proven formula that works. And okay, Lindsay, I did get stopped on the, the thing. So I, my clicker is not working. Of course, me and technology, if any of you know me. Um, <laughs> Try, uh, maybe just click into it one time. Okay, Sometimes just re if, yeah, that might work. Very good. So I go to a lot of these conferences and now I speak to doctors primarily. And one of my first questions is, how many of you think there's an immediate solution to solving healthcare? And I get a lot of crazy looks and rarely anybody ever to say, I know a solution. They are stuck in their EHRs, electronic health records, doing more times doing notes than they even get to spend with the patients. They are doing many times managed medications or cover up procedures that they wouldn't do themselves or for a family or a loved one for the first procedures, but that's what's covered. So they have to play the volume game, they have to play the electronic records, and very little time to mentor, consult, and inspire patients to make a difference. So I've met a lot of frustrated ones that are tired of their denials, they're tired of their reimbursements getting cut and forced to see and do more. So why am I telling you this is there's problems. And these problems can be solved by entrepreneurs, by personal trainers, by health coaches that understand the business and retail and lifestyle and cash-based side of healthcare that can basically eliminate half of their problems. And that's my goal is for you to have tangible steps today of how do I not go asking for referrals or collaborate with these doctors, but how do I become invaluable to them? How do I become their go-to that they're saying, you've changed my life. I don't know that I would have been able to practice care without somebody like you coming in and working besides me because they simply don't have the money to have these models of healthcare that they want. They don't have the confidence to talk nutrition, lifestyle, to ask for cash, to communicate as medical leaders. They spent years and years being in medical school to be an expert at medicine, not to be expert entrepreneurs, not to be ex expert communicators or managers or leaders. So for any of you that have ran a gym with five, 10 people, I can't tell you how valuable you could be to a doctor in terms of leading them versus when a lot of them go start these solo practices, they don't have anybody that can do the business leadership, marketing and sales of their practices ever. So they lack confidence to be successful in integrated wellness and healthcare. Communications, again, doctors are told do, just like they're in med school, they're pointed at and said, hey, follow this script, here's your protocol, they're taught to be inside this box. And so a lot of them that are newer to starting their own practice, they don't know how to lead. They don't know how to communicate with vision. They don't know emotional intelligence, just like Lindsay um, teaches and, and really communicates on, this is about effective communication, written, verbally, presentations to our teams. One of the most important aspects is they haven't been given the structure or the tools to do this inside their practices yet. For those that wanna do functional and regenerative medicine, that's the models of care that they do. They don't want to do fitness and nutrition because they don't have that training and background. They want a lifestyle root cause clinic, but when they go and talk functional or regenerative medicine right now, they're getting censored. You guys have all seen kind of the, the change of languages. If they're talking supplements or saying the right word, they're getting censored or are at risk. Even though there are some loopholes that I know how or how to communicate it safely, they haven't been taught that. So they're really scared to put themselves out there because they don't know the right ways. So why I want to tell you censorship's important. The one thing in all my integrative, functional, and regenerative clinics around the world, 
is a lot of these doctors are seen as outsiders when they do functional and regenerative. The whole medical community agrees that lifestyle, like movement, nutrition, breathing, stress management, fit evidence-based, research-based healthcare. So when you go marketing weight loss, even though you might not like that word, prevention don't sell, weight loss is still the key to not be censored, to be different, when you start combining with doctors, like I'm gonna show you how today. Clarity of the solution. The doctors are just gonna to continue to manage versus how do you be a project manager or a step person that comes and say, here's the next steps that we're gonna to do to get your message out there or to have this integrated model that doesn't cost you billions of dollars out of the gates. They just don't know what they don't know. And I'm gonna give you all the tools today to be what I call a problem solver. And just like each one of you are all going to say, all these, these problems, if you're, you're looking at these, aren't just exclusive to doctors. They're exclusive to you as well, to you and I. We all still deal with the same amount of time in a day. So how do we be efficient? How do we leverage our time? How do we use tech of the future? How do we learn to use these systems and technology to leverage our time instead of saying the same 10 things in the exam room to their patients every time about lifestyle medicine? How do we have a mini course? or something online, or these membership programs that a lot of trainers and online people have learned, but doctors in healthcare have no clue how to do this yet. There's ripe opportunity when you can solve problems. So why do I wanna spend some time here? Instead of asking them for clients or referrals, you go solve their problems, that's how you get paid, that's how you get more, that's how you build trust. You go and try to communicate and ask them for something, you're only creating more problems because they don't have the time to deal with all the things. So just be strategic in how we go forward after this presentation. If your goal is to integrate or collaborate with medical professionals, you have to be a problem solver. So how do we build for me physician trust? Learning how to communicate on the highest level. So health coaches and trainers, I made a mark by doing radio shows and I'd go interview other doctors and became the town expert. So how do you leverage them? How do you get them on the shows, handle the main objections like time, money, lifestyle, while leveraging them saying, Dr. Z is the best family practice doctor that believes in sleep, diet, exercise, blank, blank, and blank. All these different ways to help communicate, communicate in the office, communicate by, if you happen to get a referral, communicating really well back and forth one way, follow through. If you come in the office and say, I'm going to do this, this, and this, I hope you're good at taking notes because you have to be impeccable with your word when it comes to doctors building trust. They don't refer, number one, is because they're worried about liability. If I refer and they don't know what they're doing or they don't communicate back and we're not on the same page, then I'm at risk. So communication is essential to them um, because if you don't sound like an expert, and trust and can't communicate your outcomes, they're not gonna send you in the first place. So your ability to communicate what you do, your ability to follow through and pass back referrals to build that trust. When you say something, hey, I'll get you an email or I will send you a PowerPoint or I'm gonna send you my mom. Well, I hope don't say that word unless you're ready to send them your mom because then it's gonna be right there and they're gonna know you mean your business. So say what you mean and mean what you say. Produ produce results. So I know as a trainer and a health coach that I often took a patient's a long way. And I would always say, you know, thankfully Dr. Baumgartner's done this integrated model and he looked at patients in this eye and he gave this medical protocol or he referred to me. And I'm so thankful because he believes the importance of exercise, nutrition, and having accountability with somebody who's really, really effective at helping the patients make the lifestyle change. So produce that results and always make them look good. Refer to them. Don't ask them to refer to you. Refer to them first. That's why know your 20 clients, know what PT, what doctor, and, and I wish I had more time to go deep, so I'm gonna give a gift at the end of this presentation where it does go deep and, and really dials in some of the strategies. It's nothing to me is, not that I am in, uh, not that I'm not emotional and like to communicate, but everything that comes to marketing is a strategy because it's about communication and getting people to the next steps, not over delivering just the right amount. And that takes years and years and time, but we have put a resource that will help 
you be more confident when you go to those doctors and I'll, I'll make sure to give that to you at the end of the presentation. Become indispensable. That's what I meant. How do you become indispensable? You solve problems. You don't create more. You make things easy or you do the things that they absolutely have fear, no confidence in, or they can't do anyways because they don't have the time. Their, their job is to see the patients. So for those of you that maybe haven't heard me speak yet, this is my family and I'm gonna share a little bit more about my journey, but I have always heard people say in healthcare and in fitness, well, the doctors don't understand what I am, or it's the insurance companies, or it's the pharmaceuticals, or it's the government. I always hear that. And I'm really attuned to people's language patterns if they're quick to point fingers at anything besides what they are saying they are gonna do. So for instance, I teach my kids is problems are just opportunity. Don't come, just like we've all probably taught our employees, unless you're already thinking of creative ideas to solve it. So you and I probably all see the gap in healthcare, thinking the doctors that don't have time are gonna solve it is the wrong way. Versus I think, I wanna be a part of the solution. And I strongly believe that healthcare, medical fitness integration is where you and I can make the di biggest difference in changing the way healthcare can be delivered right now. And I see this as the perfect storm, the perfect opportunity based on what's just happened in our, our world. It's gonna shift to an accountable online trainer model. So I am flying fast here, but this is, in my opinion, the biggest opportunity in our history of changing the way healthcare could do. And I'm not saying that's our sole responsibility. It's gonna be taking trainers and medical leaders combining and personal trainers. So I believe we can fix that gap. We can solve those problems that I talked about. That is us, we truly are. And I'm gonna show you a model that not only you know reverses chronic disease, it's also profitable and very, very fun to work at. So we know we're in a healthcare rise, crisis. We can't support the rising costs. Implosion is inevitable. There's all sorts of st statistics I've given at different presentations. I'm just gonna save that for later. It is preventable with lifestyle, half of everything that we can do if we get to the root cause. Why do these people have diabetes? Why do they have cancer? What happened to you know, in, increase the odds of this autoimmune disease that we may think is genetic? I'm not saying that's not a part of the puzzle. It's just truly, there's usually causes to anything that we're facing other than trauma or accidents. And we're all lucky to live in the United States for that healthcare. We're the most advanced in the nation, but we are the worst in the world when it comes to chronic pain and chronic disease. And that's because I believe we've put volume and profits over people. And we're here to, to join these physicians that do believe in a different model of care for their patients. So we must break the pattern. We must do differently. What got us here will not fix it. So we must choose a different door going forward. It's just the, the time. So how do we believe this can happen? It's just like my daughter. I trained them. I was playing baseball with her the other day. I was hitting my pop flies and my son said, I can't do that. And I said, remember our words. What are, are the Burgess's words? And he said, okay, dad, I am, I can, and I will. So then all of a sudden I hit another one, my daughter catches it and he's still over there pouting, but I seen him perk up, she caught hers. The very next hit, what does he do? He catches it. Why? Because he saw somebody else do it. A, he's got a competitor right here that he does it, that we reframe that anything is possible in their mind. And you can go to Tony Robbins events, you can go to the best leaders in the world, you can follow Olympic athletes. I like to do what the pros do and they visualize winning the gold medal. They smell, they picture, they feel this life of change is possible. So maybe you don't believe you can be a seven figure trainer that has massive income, or maybe you can't rock your own independent studio, or you don't have the knowledge or expertise to go join one of these trainers. I tell you 12 years ago, I couldn't sell more than a 10 session package while I had my master's degree in working at a personal training gym because I thought sales was a nasty word. So. You had to start seeing it, visualizing it. When I first saw Lindsay speak at Fitness Business Summit 11 years ago, I was like, email marketing, what is that? Now, you know, I probably teach on email marketing. So even if something's new to you, this is your, your awakening and all you have to do is start taking action. And that's what I'll, I'll ask is that you don't just learn today, that we do something different at the end of this presentation.
So what is the answer that you've all known forever? But just because you have the solution doesn't mean anything. It's what are you going to do to start the integration? So what is medical fitness? To me, it's integrated healthcare. It's medically supervised weight loss, weight optimization, lean muscle gain, fat loss. So whatever camp you are from Pilates to strength training to cardio, I have no bias. And dogma for me just goes away. I'm going to reward or applaud or high five anybody that's moving towards a better life. So just know medical fitness I've put in CrossFit gyms to hospitals to different dogmas to no dogmas. So please know that this fits you and what I'm showing you today doesn't mean that's that the way it has to be. I just want you to see a different vision with this presentation today. Hormone optimization. You may say, well, I'm not a doctor. Well, that doctor's going to say, here's your labs, here's your tests, follow the meal plan. So you just need to have enough basic knowledge and then say, yes, keep, you know, this gluten out of your diet. Let's keep moving. Let's stretch at the end. Let's, you know, start visualizing a little bit, bit more. So you're the accountability to the doctors. You don't have to have the expertise, but you do know, need to know the benefits and the basics. Um, food sensitivities, gut health, genetic testing, sleep hygiene, stress and adrenal control, regenerative procedures, nutraceuticals. These are all different opportunities that now this is the new model of healthcare. It's going to be online programs. It's going to be group health visits for insurance-based programs. It's going to be online supplementation and, and people taking care of themselves for these courses that are a mixture of in office, but delivered online. The model of healthcare will be changing. And I have some practices that are ahead of the game. Some are creating from scratch. So don't worry. There's plenty of time to catch this wave, but it's the time to act right now on any of these things. Like I said, if you have questions and answers at the end to each one of these ideas, I'm just giving the overview today. It's not enough to go into deep action of your best next moves. So what are your responsibilities? If you want the most success in this model, and this isn't if you're just wanting to get in medical fitness, this is if you want success as a business owner. So I always say, if you're gonna go open your business, I've trained so many trainers in our facility, we've gotten them full, and then they say, okay, I'm gonna go start my own studio. And I've had over 15 trainers do that. And now most of them are broke, especially given everything that went out and went out of business. Because number one, if you do not know how to go network, sell, communicate, market, and grow the practice with marketing, you might as well just be an employee for as long as you can to gain that skills and work on it before you go waste your money and crush your dreams and, and, and end up hurting yourself. And I'm not saying to go and not open your business. I love the entrepreneurial journey. It's just if you cannot sell, if you cannot retain, if you cannot communicate and do lunch and learns, you will struggle, I promise. So out of 100 plus of these facilities that I've had in, I have to hire the implementers that run these facilities. And I've talked about, I've hired world-class trainers that were great at outcomes and that the doctors wanted to hire because they were really good trainers or physical therapists. Every one of those practices did not make money that had a good technician that could not grow. So that's number one. So when I go and why am I part of the board, board of FAI, of Functional Aging Institute, of, of Medical Fitness Network, of Med Medical Fitness Association, because I have to go find the best of the best trainers. So when I'm screening, like if you're great at getting outcomes, great. You could be a great number two health coach or trainer, but the number one hire has to learn how to scale by being able to grow it. So number one. Number two, transform the patients. If you can't change lives yet, don't even go into your own business. Don't even um, think about that you're ready for the medical fitness part. Just like me, my first training sessions, I I'd love to give you the story, but unfortunately, a uh, uh, a lady that I was really excited to work with ended up doing a backflip off of a treadmill because I said, stop walking my first training session ever. And that's a story for another day. But at the end of the day, my mentality was how do I give people the hardest workouts? Because if they're buying the trainer, they, they must want to get beat up. Um, and that was my way of thinking. So transforming the patients, what I mean by is dealing with the ideal patients, whether that's the boomers, because you're here at FAI learning, whether that's people out of cardiac rehab, is you gotta be able to transform the demographic that you're working with. I got known as a weight loss expert, which made me a perfect draw in, because if you are charging three times more than the gym, because we're medically supervised, 
you better be getting outcomes. We grew not because we were great at sales and marketing, that took learning and growth. That came after the fact, but we were very, very good at what we did. So why am I talking to all of you in here? You're all at different levels. There's no judgment. It's just, I don't want you to, to take missteps because they hurt confidence and they hurt our ability to grow. So administrative roles. Yes, there's tech. Yes, there's Infusionsoft. Yes, there's medical charts and integration now. And there's a lot of opportunity with tech. But if you're terrible at it, like me, it will show up at one point in your life or another. And when you're dealing with EHRs and running mind, body, Zen planner of what these two worlds, learning how to figure out the integration component of each one of these clinics is really, really important. Management and leadership. You may be a great trainer. You may be a good individual, but can you train that second, third, fourth person to become A players? I needed development. I needed coaching. If you are coaching other people and you are not getting coaching yourself, always try to hold that mirror to yourself. Are you leading? Are you getting coaching? Are you coaching your team members or just throwing them to the wolves and having high expectations with not truly giving them the formula or the coaching to succeed? So that is a critical part of a growth. So please keep any of those in mind. How do you begin your journey? And I want you to go follow that, that program I'll give you after. These are the, and I, I'm just edited this, so I'm sorry for my slide mistake, is renting space as an independent contractor. That's the easiest. Doesn't have any risk for them. Right now, half these clinics are down low. If you wanna integrate immediately with the doctor, you could go say, hey, can I rent that space for $300 a month? Now you have your own gym instead of going rent and snap or any of these different places. And it's not a hard way to begin. That's giving them something that they have a problem for. And if you're in there and have goodwill, now you don't need a studio. But if you do things the right way, number two starts to happen. You become referral partners. I refer to you first. And then hopefully you refer to me once I've established trust. So I never, ever encourage any one of you to ever ask for anything from anybody first, if your intention is to, to gain it from the relationship first. Be a leader, be a go-giver. If you have intentions of working with somebody, I don't care if they're a supplement company, a rep, a friend, or a person, or a business person, ask them how you can serve them first if you have a long-term intention before you ask them to ever promote your sales, product, service. It's just not a way to lead. So become an independent contractor for them. Now, if they refer their patients to you, you can even say, hey, I will do your consults for free if you prefer to me. And then, hey, I'll even give you a split once I start working with them and selling them right there. So imagine you start sending them checks, even that your own business still, man, now you're a hero. And then, hey, if they've liked you, just like I started, I started at 45 grand. I started doing what I did, bringing patients in, but what I started and what helped me grow from six figures then to partner to beyond was because 50% of the people that I would bring in for fitness, I integrated into the clinic. And I will show you how a little bit more. So that's where I was a problem solver when the clinics don't know how to grow and market regen or functional, get them coming in for weight loss. They're now the ideal patients. They're motivated, they're committed, they're ready. Now we get them over there to look at their hormones, their labs, their food sensitivities, their gut health. Now watch the results couple. So that is the money maker. That is the secret to my whole presentation. Get them in for medically supervised, integrate to the clinic. You can easily become a six figure trainer because they don't know how to do that. That one thing from this presentation, I believe I could walk into any city in the United States right now and say, I have a formula to get you more of your ideal patients. And you don't have to pay me anything, but let me have a free consultation with your patients that may be interested. That's it. So for those of you that want to take a risk and learn and practice, that's the formula right there. Number four, doctors can't do a cross state line. Telemed's going to restrict or um, is lightening up a little bit, but you could be a coaching company where the doctor could have a separate practice, partner with them and do telemed, group coaching, group visits. And again, I know I'm talking fast and these, I just want you to have an idea. I don't have the time and depth to explain them, but this is the way of healthcare is a lot of doctors can't prescribe across state lines. They can't coach the same way versus there's a lot of docs that have been in different masterminds that understand this coaching formula where they can jump on a group Zoom call just like this, 
talk about labs, not do individual one-on-one -on -one care, and grow a rare, very, very scalable model if they have the right partner that knew digital marketing, um, connections, membership sites, the basic stuff that makes the doctors heroes right now. So I know there's questions, save these questions. These are the most important three slides for you guys to really think about yourself and your future next steps. But now I gotta give you a little bit of the how we did what we did. And what we created is the five pillars of practice success. I will lightly explain that for the first few years, we did our medical fitness license program, which is now pillar four, but we recognized a lot of these practices didn't have the leadership skills, they didn't know how to run a business, and they had no clue how to market and grow their practices. So they saw me speak and they're like, I want that. They didn't, and until I started working with them, did I realize they really didn't know how to run their practices in the first place. So we pivoted um, a few years ago and said, hey, now you have to come into our five pillars of practice success, past the initial three pillars. Then if you have a profitable practice, we'd gladly add medical fitness because we feel any healthcare without nutrition or fitness is not healthcare, it's managed care. So that medical fitness, it's now instead of the first step, it has to become the fourth step because I promise you've got an uphill battle all day long if they're already hurting. So, and then the fifth pillar, which we're gonna talk about is integration. How to not be in silos like the hospital wellness centers to where when we have a patient, they're all gonna get the same journey, experience and information, even if they don't do it all, they'll at least be able to see the patient journey of, oh, what's this part? Or, oh, I didn't do that. Okay, that's why you didn't get the same outcomes that Mary Susie Joe that you saw on the website had. So how do we begin the healthcare? A lot of you say, a doctor say, well, I don't know how to begin. Well, your nurse comes in and your takes vital signs. They do the, the, the temperature now. Now all we have to do to change healthcare is add two simple questions and add it as a vital sign. On average, how many days do you work out? If that answer is not at all, we're gonna give a medical fitness prescription immediately. If that goal is less than there or they have any risk factors, our templates, our electronic health record systems can print these temp templates and exercise prescriptions once we have integration. I just wanted to show you a future point of a lot of people say how, the doctors don't even have to do this. The whole system can automate to where they never had to say one word if they, they learn how to implement a system that we've been able to, to incorporate. And how did this all begin for me? I mentioned earlier, I was going through grad school as a personal trainer and I loved the show, The Biggest Loser, that came out. And when the doctor saw that patient um, and he'd say, do you know you're at risk of stroke, heart attack and disease? You gotta do something about this. And then they'd start crying. I said, I get it now. That's what it's all about is the doctors are the most authoritative source. If they told you to drink mortar oil, you'd probably consider it. They told you to go have this surgery. You jump and you go do it, even if it's the most invasive because people don't question doctors. I'm not saying that you shouldn't question that, but that's how our society has became. So the fact of the matter is we must prescribe. And when we're working with these doctors say, this is something that's really important to you. So I got it and I saw that model and I was like, I gotta do something about this. And it happened because I was working with a patient that had a torn rotator cuff and he was diabetic and he didn't want to have surgery. And he said, I went and saw this Joel Baumgartner guy and he did prolotherapy and PRP and I avoided surgery and he was doing great workouts. And I said, hmm, because I still, I played college baseball and rugby and I would play on the weekends and I would limp all week long. And sports were my identity in life growing up. It helped me overcome trauma, helped me become very strategic and, and work really hard. So I wasn't ready to give it up but I thought I was gonna to have to. So I decided to go see him and he said, JR, because you exercise and eat healthy, you're probably gonna get a better outcome right away. But let me look at your labs. Let me look at your vitamin D, your testosterone, your thyroid. So he optimized that and three, three weeks later, I was back to playing with no problems. So I was sold right there and he said, JR, I'm family practice in sports medicine. I've seen you training at Gold's and he worked out there. And he said, you're always so focused. I see your clients transforming. Um, if I have a family patient, patient and they come in, they're diabetic, and I give them a pill, I know I'm just covering it up. If they come in as a sports medicine side and I give them an epidural injection, I know if I don't get them eating healthy to a healthy weight, I'm just covering it up. Will you join me and be a concierge to my patients? It's like, yeah, all right. That was the dream. It was starting to happen. And it began. I joined him. He was already a leader in 
prolotherapy and PRP and known around the medical community for doing these non-surgical injections. And I, this is actually my second room. I started in an 80 square foot room that was right before this. And I would train one-on-one, -on -one, but then as we got busier, um, we, we had people that wanted morning times. I'd be in the hallways from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. And then 8 or 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. when the clinic closed, I was using the whole space. And after two months, we hired a couple of trainers and they trained out of a snap fitness because we didn't have the room in the clinic. So we didn't have to get a gym. We didn't have to go in high cost. They fight for membership. So we were just paying the membership, but we're allowed to use those spaces. And if you or somebody you know own a PT space, this is the perfect scenario. They are not busy from 5 a.m. to 8, 8 a.m., from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Over that noon hour, when all these clinical people are used to working nine to five, take their lunches, you guys could be operating at the prime time, busy time and maximizing the revenue per square foot. So I say these fast, but these are the keys for you to learn how to integrate not being a cost center and, and build into something profitably. So please take attention. I'll try to always stop on those cues if it's important to know. So using another gym, using PT space at prime hours is a way to do this very lean to, to build up smart. So what happened is we started marketing medically supervised weight loss. I only knew how to bring my existing clients over, started going doing lunch and learns and a lady named Susan came in. She was in chronic pain. She was depressed. Um, she was contemplating suicide because the pain management doctor called her a drug chaser. The orthopedic surgeon already had replaced all her joints, said there's nothing more that we can do. And she's like, JR, I'm desperate. I said, I'm not equipped to start with you right away. Let's go get you over to the functional medicine department, look at your labs. Let's get you over to Dr. Baumgartner so he can do PRP or, or prolotherapy. Let's get you over to physical therapy so we can get some corrective exercises. And then I started her with um, Christine to start doing the nutrition and corrective exercise personal training. Three months later, she was down 50 pounds off all but two medications, had her zest and vitality back. So these are chronic pain patients that didn't have solutions that were completely recovering. So she since referred over 100 patients to us when traditional medicine had no more solutions for her. So with her story, in my story, what we started to find is when we had people experience all three aspects of our, our pr process, we were getting consistent, predictable outcomes of overcoming chronic pain, diabetes, heart disease, and it starts by if you look at our first step, restore your life. This is medical fitness. This is health coaching, fitness, nutrition, sleep, relaxation. We all have the skills to be the most important part of generating a successful outcome. Then that doctor, when they get that compliant patient, who's their ideal patient now? It's not like I got 17 medications and my daughter has this and I'm that. It's like suck the life out of you. Even though that we have empathy and love for that patient, if that person doesn't quickly identify that, hey, I'm willing to forgo something, I'm trying different, just tell me what to do, then some people are gonna live in that world. And there's not a lot we can do. And we still do educate them and we will refer out, but we just tell them clearly, if you're not doing this whole picture, we don't get the same results, end of story. So then we would again, rejuvenate their life. And then when that, that blood was healthy, cause bad blood goes everywhere, and we did our orthopedics, physical therapy, and stem cells or PRP, we were getting game-changing outcomes. We started training Minnesota Vikings and getting referrals. We started hitting um, influencers and celebrities. And because we got amazing results, we started continuing to grow like crazy. So we went from building our small model to I went to a 6,000 square foot center when we had 120 patients after 10 months at Snap Fitness. And I said, hey, instead of paying them $3,000 a month, Let's go open up our own warehouse. And that's how we are able to start getting into, instead of one-on-one, -on -one, into large group training and boot camps, bringing more people in here for the weight loss programs. And then I was getting better at integrating them to the clinic as we go. So we we're having massive success and we started building the largest independent integrated center in the country. It, this picture does it no good. It's, it's the most unbelievable thing that, that you've seen in healthcare. Um, so essentially we had this model and we go into this new building and I get a call from um, our, our, our Minnesota legislators and insurance contract. And they say, if you guys don't quit doing regenerative medicine and functional medicine, we're gonna take off all your insurance contracts. And I said, Dr. Baumgartner, 
Unfortunately, I think we have to stop. There's no way we can survive. And he said, JR, I would rather go out of business than go back to doing medicine that I know does more harm than good in my patients' lives. So he's like, let's double down on community relationships. Let's market more. He sent me to more masterminds and continued to go all in our community. And it was exciting because we were, knew we were getting massive outcomes. And then a year later from when we lost our insurance contract, we started really growing again, went from losing $500,000 that year because we didn't have insurance to again being profitable. And we won the Minnesota Innovation Award. And that was a proud moment for us because the orthopedic surgeons called us charlatans. The family practice doctor in the hospital people said that's voodoo medicine. And guess what now? Five years later, every one of them does regenerative medicine and every, even the hospital system built a model 10,000 square foot bigger than ours. So they all duplicated because they saw how Reju went to this model, how the community was buzzing. It wasn't about Centric Care. It's like, that's the last place I want to go. It's Reju, Reju, Reju became the go-to because of results. People want hope for results. So again, if you want to be the best trainer, health coach, you must be the best at results. So that is what's going to get you become a category of one. So I know you probably don't be able to do it AR, I don't think it's coming through. It is, or is it? It's not, no. It's just follow along. Um, I just, so you can see it for a second, and then we'll go for it. Okay, it is a good message regardless. Um, so we won um, the nice award. And at that time, that's when I created my first book, The Medical Fitness Impact Plan. I started getting high level coach saying, JR, you got a lot of great info in your head, but it's not systemized. It's not organized. If you're going to go from 20 locations like you are now to 50 to 100, you got to better organize your knowledge. And that was the, the, the process of why we call it the medical fitness impact plan. But today I'm doing, since this isn't just to trainers, and I want you guys to know the model of future, I'm doing the normal talk that I do to docs, but more geared to you so you can go partner with them or collaborate so we can change healthcare together. So we went from, again, just a few locations to seeing this in clinical um, centers, nutrition centers, hospitals, chiropractic buildings, standalone gyms, starting to incorporate it. Corporate wellness exploded for us, as especially these self-insured companies that are like, great, I'm paying out the, the pocket for unhealthy patients. How do I, our, our employees, how do we get them healthier? So we started saving significant money by tracking outcomes, always tracking outcomes and data, not thinking we're good, but proof in that, that, that data. And we started growing. Um, even Dan introduced us three years ago to Jackie and we put our, our facilities in the license model in China. We did our model in Taiwan by really teaching comprehensive healthcare. So they're open to it. And the cool part about this is one of our first doctors, Dr. Tate, I met at the Fitness Business Summit. Out of you know hundreds of trainers there, I happened to sit next to the own doctor. And he says, JR, I can no longer put an epidural steroid. I can no longer give these medications. I'm coming here to learn how to be a personal trainer so I can help my patients. And I said, whoa, hold up a minute, doc. Is you're giving up your medical degree to become a personal trainer? And he said, yes. And I said, hey, come to Minnesota, see our model, you can be the orchestrator of an integrated model. And he says, but I don't have any business in marketing knowledge. I said, neither did we when we first started. Neither did many people unless they grew up in that environment. But when you're following a model that's already been invented, a lot of kinks to work out, we're supposed to save you a lot of time, frustration, and headaches along the way. So he came, no business experience. And just like every entrepreneur, we have to take our bumps, our lumps, and learn from it. And three years later, he stood on our, our stage as the regenerative practice of the year. So from barely getting by to a full practice of regenerative medicine that we're changing his patients lives. And that's three year journey. So even if you're just beginning, things don't happen overnight, but you have this vision of two to three years, I promise you anything's possible. 
in this integrated model. Even if you don't already have the skills or the marketing knowledge to you to go from making 25 grand, like I did with a master's degree at a corporate gym to, to making all the money you want. And I'm not saying it's about money. It's always about us as was outcomes, a model that was scalable. But I promise you, if you want to be a good business person and you want to be music to a doctor's ears, it cannot lose money. Otherwise you're part of the problem. So even if it breaks even and you integrate the right ideal patients, they will still be happy, but you cannot lose money and expect anybody to be happy as a business owner. So this is what we pivoted. We went from regen to doing more of our five pillars after we learned a little bit more at masterminds where we'd coach the doctors, teach them again, not only the skills, but absolutely the business, the marketing, the communication, the leadership, the, you know, holding their cool, being able to communicate on the highest level because it's, you know, the biggest factor. And we believe right now for you guys all right now to be able to integrate the health coaching, the fitness, the online components that would make their practices set up for telemed right now is an opportunity like no other. And we believe this five pillars is going to get, give you a little bit of an insight in a, in a structured system that's proven to work in, in places all over the world. And to start with the five pillars, the first one is the personal. As I said from the beginning, the minute you're saying, well, my market won't handle that, or I just have Medicare patients, or you're given an excuse to why you're not where you're at right now, you're already losing compared to a pro that says, who knows how to do this? Who has done this? And what do I need to know or learn how to do to do this? That is the model I have. Just like 10 years ago, I sat at that same conference that Lindsay was presenting at the Fitness Business Summit. And I said this, if he can do this with personal trainers, why can't I do this with doctors? And I paid for five years of his mastermind to learn that exact formula in fitness, in healthcare. And basically everything that you see here is me copying what modeling, I should say, what he did in the fitness space to what I'm doing here. And now the last three years has been doing my own thing of what I found was necessary to change. But that's how it all began. It's just following a model. And so I'll, I'll go through what this means, a little bit about my story, just so you know, I, I'm certainly, if I'm capable of this, I absolutely know you're capable of this, is I was joyous and extroverted as a child and was horribly teased by a teacher in the fifth grade. And I would no longer go to school and I didn't tell my mom, it erupted, came in out. So they ended up having plastic surgery for me. But after I had the plastic surgery, it didn't fix my, my self-esteem and my self-confidence. So the only thing that could shut down my depression was sports. So I didn't even want to go to school, but the minute I was out of school, I was playing baseball, basketball, football, and I couldn't stop playing sports. The whole world would drown out when that happened. And I, instead of being, ta I wasn't that talented growing up. Maybe it was, I don't know. I just, that's all I, I uh, obsessed on is, how do I learn, follow, understand the game of each one of the sports that I love? And fortunately in the seventh grade, I found another love. I got drunk for the first time and got a minor consumption the first time I drunk and fell in love with drinking and drugs. I would go from the shy extroverted kid to the life of the party. And now I was this 12 year old kid hanging out with the seniors and became good at sports and became quote, quote unquote popular because drugs and alcohol and I ha was halfway talented at sports. Didn't mean I still didn't have a low self-esteem or could have never asked, you know, the girls that I had crushes on that I liked unless they would come on me, uh, come on to me. That was the, the difference maker for me. And I promise you, I hated teachers and authority at this point. I got kicked out of every single class I was ever in. Pre-algebra was the furthest I graduated in high school in the ninth grade. That was my last high school class. Then I had to go to learning centers. I never had any formal spelling in, in grammar or English in high school and still have never taken a formal spelling and grammar class, except for um, in college, I had to do some college reading. That was the furthest I've gone in terms of a uh, college curriculum. So I, my goal was to, again, to be a stunt man, not to go to college, to, to be a stunt man because I did crazy stunts and I had no fear and a lot of fun stuff or to go build water towers with my dad. So on my senior year, we were just finishing up baseball and we go into American Legion and I tore my, my, my uh, meniscus and I had to have another knee surgery. So I missed playoffs. I was finally healthy enough and we were going to playoffs again in American Legion in the summer. And one of my friends who didn't play lit up a joint 
and I took a hit of it, not to even get high. I wouldn't mess with baseball, and I blew it in a friend's face, and uh, the coach saw it, and I got kicked off the team. They went on, and they won the state championship that year. We were really good, and um, I was horribly depressed. I drank a liter of vodka every night for, for 90 days, and my dad came and got me out of a trailer home because I moved out, and uh, I went and built water towers. And I learned really quickly, which my father has done it my whole life, what hard work was. I was missing drinking. I was missing partying. But I learned, you know, very quickly how to, how to be serious, even when I wasn't serious in my life. Hard work, high, high risk, everything. Made really good money. But I was missing partying and baseball. So I went back to Hib Hibbing Community College. I had to take a year of prerequisites before I even got a college credit. And basically the second year, I got academic All-American in the sport of baseball. And I realized I wasn't stupid for the first time. I just recognized that, hey, when I actually like this or a teacher's not telling me I have to do this or, you know, I can just show up, then it was like, okay, this is all right. And my mind was now, I love sports. I just need a degree. And if I can do this, I'd love to go work for the Twins, the Vikings, anything sports-wise, I'd be forever happy. So I did well in call, uh, undergrad. I went to St. Cloud State to play baseball had another knee injury and ended up falling in love with rugby. And um, that was my story. So ended up graduating college, went back for, for water towers for two more years, then decided to go to, to college. Um, in, in, in my master's degree, I tore my Achilles tendon from a rugby injury and I didn't get the GA that I wanted. And so I went to Gold's Gym. They asked me to, to call people, leads to get them on the phone. And like, oh, you're not as scared of this. Why don't you do sales? So I did a year of sales before they'd even leave, because it was the busiest gym in Minnesota, before they even let me start personal training. And that's again, where you always heard the show, The Biggest Loser came out and I was modeling and learning. And I recognized right away that nutrition was the biggest factor for getting my clients results. But I was always a good coach because I learned how to be a coach in sports and put people the right way. So this is where, you know, one of the first fitness business summits, we went, um, I still had a lot of problems. So I always worked hard, but my mentality was still party hard at this time. So I was going to those masterminds. We were kicking butt. My wife wanted to leave me because she says, JR, you play rugby and sports five nights a week. You work 60 hours a week. Um, when you drink, you black out still. You swear like an Iron Ranger. You don't have faith in your life. And I'm like, why the hell did you marry me? It's, you know, I'm a good guy. I'm the same guy that I was. And what I didn't understand, and I was almost resentful at first, is she just had higher standards for me and she saw something a little bit different. So now years later, all those things are out of my life and I'm so thankful she, she held me to a, a higher standard. Um, but where the biggest move is, is I was all about being a good student. So I was getting the coaches, I would implement everything they said. So they, they knew it, we were paying big money at implement. So I would black out at these meetings. I, I was again, work hard, party hard. And on, on, on year three, I missed the whole second day and I had alcohol poisoning when I went with Joel and Craig handed me a book said, JR, I've seen you work really, really hard. You're one of the most dedicated people I've ever seen, but I've seen you over the last few years now. And I think, you know, this alcohol is getting in your way. And I, and I read it on the way home. It's a book called Turning Pro by Stephen Pressfield. And it says a pro says what they want. I'm going to change healthcare. I'm going to make a difference but they don't say what they want. They mean what they say. They do whatever it takes to make that happen. So a pro means what he says and says what he means. A pro can hold their alcohol. A pro has a plan. A pro gets coaching to get the problems out of the way. A pro does whatever it takes to succeed. So at the end of that plane ride, I said I would never have a drink of alcohol again in my life. And that's now been seven plus years because I meant what I said and said what I meant. So I promise you all, if you want to get to the next level, it's not anybody in your company, it's about you. And, but you like exercise, you like fitness, that's why we're here, right? So you know, as you put more resistance against the body, the stronger you get, if done in the right doses and not overtraining and done the right way. So you have to get comfortable getting uncomfortable. We have to climb a mountain. You can anticipate seven steps up and three steps back down in course correcting. This is going to be a journey. It's just get really clear with your outcome and plan, get coaching and learn how to up level along the way. But I promise you, I thought I was going to lose it all when we went into that building. 
dealing with Lyme's disease, alcohol, employee turnover, everything you could ever imagine has happened along this journey. And I'm thankful for all of it now because it's what I needed to get to the next level. If I'm dealing with CEOs and doctors and compliance, we've had some pretty serious situations that eight years ago, there's no way I would have been and had the EQ, the adversity quote and the intelligence to handle all of it like the eye of a hurricane. Now when these certain storms are going around, I am centered in just taking action each daily. I very rarely get caught by, by the storm. So what do we gotta do? We gotta become champions. I didn't mean to jump in my story, but all of them are part of my journey. Being teased turned me into an empath. That's my greatest gift to this day. That drugs and alcohol turned me into somebody that has no judgment. You wouldn't believe the doctors that come and say, I'm having this affair, I'm dealing with this depression. Just like your clients, when I started communicating that through email, like I learned from Lindsay, they're like, oh my goodness, this person's real. They're not on a pedestal, they're not scared. So I transparently share my mission. I don't hold anything back from clients, doctors. In fact, I only did it to clients and I didn't do it to doctors until my speaking coach said, JR, you need to start sharing your story. So that's why what I just shared today, I didn't start sharing that till two and a half years ago. And my numbers started quadrupling at my events when I started talking about my story. I'm so thankful for the sports that helps me see vision and can see the whole playing field. Like I'm seeing all people operate at one time because I spent so much time in there. So thankful because I had a massive fear of speaking and standing on these stages. And I had to relate to sports to say every time before a game, I had to go pee four, four or five times. I was always nervous. But as soon as that first hit or that first pitch was thrown, it's like I'd already been there. I practiced harder than everybody else. I was ready. And speaking was the only the same thing. As soon as I got going, it was fine. But I promise you, five years ago, I, I barely slept a week before our big events and everything like that. Now it's like, please, where can I get more of my message out there? Not because I think I'm good, but because I know there's more people that need to hear the message and, and to take action. So you're either going to be living in the past or blaming or pointing fingers, or you're going to be present with taking action each day so you can build the future you want. So I promise your success or your excuses have to get out of the way. You got to kill those darlings, make those a part of your stories. Those are gifts. Everything that happened to us, once you get the other side are the gifts that really can be the difference to attract exactly who you want to attract when you learn how to tie that together. So that is the personal pillar. I would love to sell, say there's a tech solution or one talk that you will learn in this presentation that will change your life. That's just not true. It's going to be you going and doing something you heard this weekend and practicing it at, and fumbling five times and then gaining confidence because confidence is the number one predictor of success. I'm just going to go do it. Just like when I got on the rugby field, nervous, nervous, nervous. As soon as that first hit came, it's just like the whole rest of the world is drowned out in a complete focus and, and fun. So the business pillar, this is the most important. When you think business, you think, how do I have consistent and repeatable systems because knowledge in your head is dead. I've been to a lot of doctor's office and a lot of trainers. They have somebody super talented. And I call this the star pitcher module. Well, what happens if that star pitcher tears his rotator cuff and now they're out of the game? What happens if that trainer goes starts his other studio? What happens if you know, your one-on-one -on -one time gets full? Your ability to scale and grow your team and have systems that give your patients a consistent, repeatable experience is critical from you going from 30 grand to 70 grand to 100 grand to 100 people to 200 people, whatever that goal of yours is, is it's gonna be done better with systems and training processes. So you're not stuck doing everything day after day after day. It can't be delegated. You're not getting to your unique abilities, your 5% as they call it, that should be speaking, selling, managing, motivating, delegating and selling. Everything else should be off your hands. So business pillar, I'll just kind of go through a few of these things. These are HR processes. This is a sales process. Do you know your numbers? Do you're there? If you knew your numbers, I know as a coach exactly where to pick up or where the gap is versus most of the doctors or, or trainers I have to st start going working with, they have no data. I can usually clearly see by some numbers, but if you're going to coach your other people to get better at sales, we have to know their numbers and how to reverse engineer that and coach to it. Um, marketing process. How do you do one video and get that to every channel? 
How do you basically take them from leads? How do you follow up? Is it in a CRM? Is it an infusion stuff? Is it pen and paper or do you have no system? So all of these, if you don't have a system, you don't have scalability. So financial processes, alien manuals, that's if, if your best person or you got abducted by an alien, will the show still go on? Job checklist. And I always say, you can't have high expectations of anybody if you haven't shown them, shadowed them, taught them based off that shadow and reflected, watch them teach others and coach that, and then follow up to make sure it's done the way that you've taught because it'll be uncomfortable for them if they're learning it. So people teach it one time and they let them go and they think they come back and you come three months later and there's no even synergy to what was originally taught. So again, to scale to that next level, just like we said, step four has got to be what is the training in, in, of that further team to know that system confidently to perform at a benchmark that works for you. So what do our, our business look like now that I promise wasn't there at one point? It's I know the top 10 numbers of our company, of our departments, and every individual. And we reverse engineer those numbers. And I, again, in the roadmap challenge that I'm going to give you all free access, I do break each one of these pillars down so much deeper. I just want you to understand what it takes to run a successful business, to successfully integrate with the doctor in how we, we run a good business. Benchmarks and tracking. If you don't know how your marketing is performing, a lot of people see marketing as an expense. Your marketing should be an investment. If you're not full, pump more dollars into there all day long. So marketing must change the mindset if you're gonna grow and scale because otherwise you're gonna be the best kept secret. Mapping every process when we do integrated care. So sometimes they'd see our dietitian first, sometimes they'd start with the trainers based on the schedule. So if they went two different ways here that I'm showing on the screen, we had two different outs. I don't know what those scratches are in my PowerPoint presentation, something tech wise that I definitely dot botched, not by design. Meetings, where most of these doctors say, well, they don't listen, or I told them to do that. It's like, great, you have their to-do list written down, we follow what they call traction EOS. Do you have accountability? Do you have next steps? Do you have dates? Do you have deadlines? Do you communicate through issues? Do you have active to-do lists? Because you may think you told something, if it's not on your paper, it, you might as well just kiss it goodbye when it comes to leadership management or scalability beyond a few people. Scorecards and KPIs, we run our business that we start to be able to predict and project or see slow in trends in months instead of getting your profit and loss statements a month later and like, oh my goodness, what happened? What do I do? I gotta get rid of this person, I gotta hire. We already know our numbers well ahead of time when you can become predictable. So that is the business pillar. So how am I doing, Lindsay? How much on time left? 15 minutes, huh? Okay. About 10, 12 minutes. All right, I can do this. Marketing and sales pillar. Um, you guys will see it throughout the seminar this weekend. Nicole Gebhardt is there or virtually in there. She's really helped us and me, Dan and Cody, put together processes that is a sales brochure. So when you have organized knowledge that isn't a sales brochure, um, Seven Steps of the Influential Doctor, I teach that. She's helped me build that structure in concise all my knowledge. So I wanna give you that at the end of this presentation. Uh, this is a, a big deal of your marketing and selling system. So I'm going to lightly go over it is clear message. That is what medical fitness is. When you have that doctor and you have, you know, how to avoid, how to restore and rebuild your body without drugs or surgery. That's a clear message that somebody could come into our practice and know we're different than everybody else. So with a thousand CrossFits out there or a thousand gyms, what is your clear message that separates you from everybody else? Ours was medically integrated fitness different from every other sports med, every other family practice by having something that's different. And then we built a brand that looks good, that's succinct, that has patient journey, all this stuff that I want you guys to watch later that is crit critical to being a successful retail cash-based model. This chapter alone, chapter three in this book, is the marketing formula of the seven steps that work to scale and grow these integrated models. Simple lead offers. How do you give them instead of asking for it, just like this doctor, a quiz, a cookbook, a brochure, anything. That's number three, a simple lead offer. Then again, how do you follow up? Even if they don't convert, how do you have the right system in place that never ends the follow-up system? Even when they're a patient, even after they're gone, these are systems that are critical to keeping those that have given us our trust at one point. Omnipresence, how do you be everywhere? It's very easy to do with targeting, refocusing, it may look like I'm everywhere. You just need one video a week 
and know how to leverage some of the different systems and technology. Signature book. That's if like my cash practice book that will also give you at the end of this. I had my medical fitness one. Then I had my keynote one, the cash practice. That's the big one that I get a lot of keynotes off. Great, but not everybody's going to read a 200 page book. So that's why Nicole, after the fact, gave me my most impactful and best, you know, info in the shortest amount of page process. Because we've learned, we need people to take action faster. So simple lead offer should solve your first problem that makes your life a little bit easier down the road. And then keynote talk is just your signature book in a talk format. So all of this is structure, but at the end of the day, here's what we always say is, just like for us, people need to learn about us by either online, speaking, talking, it's only a handful of ways. You can't be the best kept secret if you're not getting your message out there, then we can't have any expectations. It's not field of dreams, build it and they will come. So then what do we do? We get people in with either a free consult, a medical fitness test drive, a low barrier offer, a six day challenge, a one week detox, get them in there with something cute and markety that solves their first problem. And then we learn how to progress them to the higher level services that are truly going to transform their life. And we call it raising everybody's having level. I never want to sell anything that doesn't improve somebody's outcome or results. So the more they commit, the more they invest, in all reality, the better outcome that they get. And we can always look at this as time too. If they want me for a free price, here's my free, here's my reading, here's my books. If they wanted a cheap, cheaper rate, here's my group program where I come on there and cheap. But one-on-one -on -one should be expensive and exclusive to your time as we scale and try to deliver all three. That's why I never feel bad. Oh, I just can't do anything. Wonderful, here's my presentations, here's my literature. Oh, I think I can afford this. Great, here's my group program. I'm ready for whatever it takes. Here's my three offers. So having a strategy behind your vehicle, your engine, everything really, really matters to your overall strategy. So as, as social media and digital, I'm just gonna fly through this email marketing, grassroots efforts, referral. All of these are very, very, very advanced strategies. Nothing by, yeah, I'm on social media. No, a clear SOP to each one of these with a clear content calendar and very, very strategic where we never ask for anything first. So I would love to go deeper and inside that, that web or uh, roadmap that I'm gonna give you, you will be able to, to take this in deeper. But you guys already heard me touch on it. We must give, give, and then they usually ask what's next or how do I begin? Or if it's completely systemized the right way, there's always a next step leading them to the right area. Because at the end of the day, if they sit in front of us and we don't give them an offer, or take the next step, then because we have this bleeding heart or we're thinking we're taking from them, you're not gonna change their lives. So your patient or client is in front of you for a reason. It's just like we hear the used car salesman analogy. If I'm in a used cars lot, I need a used car. And I hope they give me the best rate and the best price and give me what I want. So we gotta get rid of that. And trust me, I had a, a lady that had over 150 pounds to lose. I sold her one of my cute 10 session packages. I knew she drank, I knew she did all those other stuff. She says, thank you, you've helped me lose the 20 pounds, JR. And I said, thank you, call me if you need any more help. And I got a call six months later that she died of a stroke and I took that really hard. If I had just fought for her, if I had just got her on an EFT program from the beginning, like I had to learn after the fact, this might not have happened. And now I strongly believe if anybody leaves and I don't sell them, I believe I'm killing them because I don't think there's a better alternative to what the clinics that I work with have. And that went from, I am scared to asking for the money to now I believe that I'm killing them. And that's how I've had to overcome this. So they're looking for people who can listen, who can get results. So if they've come to you for help, it's a disservice to not allow them to work with you. So what is medical fitness? This is the whole key. This is the whole solution. So again, they came into medical fitness, look to that bubble chart to the right. I did two things when I had our challenges, our low barrier offers, medically supervised weight loss ads. When they come, I did a health assessment. So on their part Q, if they had high blood pressure, cholesterol, directly over to the fun functional medicine for a pre-exercise physical or to get their hormones or, or the symptoms looked at. If they squat and they had dysfunction, directly up to physical therapy. If they squat and they had pain, directly into PT. So I was getting 20, 30, 40 people in on our low barrier months and getting half of them into our clinic that were the ideal patients. That's what made Rejuve profitable. That's what made me indispensable. That's what started getting world-leading outcomes. 
And that's what allowed me to scale and, and get to 200 different practices. Not because I had a fitness cost center that was siloed. So please do not look at medical fitness as I'm doing fitness and training. If you're going to have the success that is possible, look at it as I am a part of this healthcare team and this fitness gets these better out that any one of these procedures that this office does better outcomes. So what did we do? We did have that patient that came in and we're like, I thought every one of his patients were going to want to come see me. None wanted that. They just wanted their drugs or their pain to go away if they were coming directly for that. So what did we start doing? Instead of only getting a few patients, we started saying when they come into the office, thank you. Let's say they came in for knee pain. Thank you so much for coming to Reju. We are going to look not only at what we can do short term, but we strongly believe the foods that you're eating, how you're breathing, how you're sleeping is not only going to impact your outcome short term, but not only your long-term knee health and your overall health and longevity. So please log on here. It has our free cookbooks, meal plans, recipes, and we'd give that out for lunch and learns in the communities, everything. Give away, give away, give away. Everybody's like, you're giving that away for free? I charge for that. Give it away, give it away. Doesn't even matter. Well, they're going to steal it. Give it away, give it away, give it away. So then essentially on the backside, we said medical fitness test drive. However, if you're looking for more support, accountability, follow through our customization, our medical fitness specialist sends your clinic here, would give you your free medical fitness test drive. This is how we went from very few referrals to about 20% of our clinic patients now doing this. And this is what every hospital center does not do. When they come into the clinic, they're not giving an exercise prescription or the next steps. And until they make it a part of the plan, it's just not gonna happen. So our fitness, and hopefully I have five minutes and I can bring it home, five minutes, good? You're, you're at like three, but you, you can okay, do it. Five minutes. <laughs> so essentially, if you look at 2016, which is covered, is fitness did $1.4 million in revenue. Fitness referral did $1.2 million in revenue. What it didn't account for is if I got a mother to lose 30 pounds, she went over to the clinic, but then her husband had back pain and he came to the clinic first. It didn't account for that, but it happened all the time. So we believe out of our 6.7 million in 2016, nearly 50 to 60% was derived from medical fitness alone. So instead of it costing money like it does in healthcare centers, here's for over 50 to 60% responsible for our success. That's the inverse in the way I want each one of you thinking going forward here, if this is of any interest to you. So medical fitness really is about bridging the gap. It's creating real health for our patients' lives. You make an undeniable difference in your community. Our clinic was fired up. Most pain management clinics are depressing or draught or sick. This is energy. This is how do we get you better? It's easy to add to that PT model. It's low overhead. I give you four risks that don't cost the doctor anything. Um, and then integration pillar, just to bring it home. Integration is about the systems that, that do tie it together. So we basically had to create motivational interviewing type prescriptions because the doctors aren't good at asking questions or filling the gap. Are you looking for non-surgical and drug-free options to better manage your pain? So if they say yes, the doctor can no longer go into their old cover-ups and medications and band-aids. They know they better now prescribe medical fitness, regenerative or functional medicine. So we've created systems that have made it easy. When they get a treatment plan, every single time lifestyle medical fitness is being prescribed on one level or another, even if it's free, such as, hey, I want you to do yoga at home with Adrian for 20 minutes on YouTube. They are getting a comprehensive, what we call a treatment plan prescription. That is the main difference of what we need the clinicians doing. So you guys look like the heroes when you get them. You see the plan, now as a health coach or trainer, you see the script and where your role fits in. So that is integration. We had these videos, we precede because not everybody's ready to do the cash space stuff right away. So this doctor education would warm them up. Again, we'd give this for free. That's what gave us lunch and learns. And, and again, follow the seven week strategy. We did our, our medical fitness things. I would get so mad if like my mom has lupus, if a trainer was doing burpees or trying to crush people like I was doing out of the gates. So we all do movement based workouts, all starting to scale and progress them appropriately. So just to wrap up, if you're going to have integrated success, great outcomes at the center, great team. So again, one all-star, you may be able to make six figures, but you're not gonna impact the world. There's no judgment if that's just what you want. Some people should probably only be doing that. So great team is what it's all about. Operational process consistency. It's hard when you hear somebody that got a bad experience and somebody that got a world-class experience because somebody didn't follow the, the, the protocols. Patients, 
We made them a part of the story. We asked them for their reference. They know this is a different model of healthcare. So we are not shy about learning how to ask for testimonials or hear the right words. So then we can make them a part of this journey, which a lot of doctors are terrible at. And a lot of trainers are, well, I can't ask them or they don't want to be known. It's you haven't done it the right way. There's ways to where 90% of the time you're absolutely getting a yes. And please, can I? Professional referrals. If you're not getting referrals from those other places, maybe we're not communicating enough. We're not getting the community. We're not learning how to be the go-giver. And then marketing. I know you don't like this word. Marketing and sales is necessary to change the world if the six or the, the five other things are in place first. And then ultimately, that commitment to excellence. Growth must continue to happen for all of us. So take the jump, take an action, ask a question, what do you have to do today? But most people confuse wishing and wanting a successful or an integrated or a medical fitness or a boomer studio. You must place your trust in action. So that YouTube guy, he's smart. I do have my seven um, session roadmap courses all about building the medical integrated practice of the future. So if you email me info at healthevators.com and have this course, this is what I sell to my doctors as a gift today. I'm giving that to all of you for free just to get these seven videos and understand everything that I covered on a much higher level. So about an hour to hour and a half on each one of those pillars. So you get the full overview. So thank you. I know I probably don't have time for questions. I hope it was insightful and it gives you a different view. Um, I had fun. I, I certainly like being in person better, but <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Dan and Cody. Keep changing the world. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you all of you for coming and committing to learning more. Go talk to Nicole. She has a, a, an entry to get you patients right off the bat. That's a, a big strategy. I hope some of you are thinking today and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much, JR. Can you real quick go back to your slide with your contact information? so they can get that email. Great. Got it. Everybody got that. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the conference. I told you, you all were taking a ton of notes. Best wishes. Enjoy the rest of the conference, everybody. Thanks, JR. Thank you.